Hey everybody, I was actually wrong when I said that I had another E50 game. Sorry about that, I have an awful short-term memory. Um, it's actually a T54 match, so it's Bros is playing his other favourite tank. There you go. How convenient. Still in the same platoon with Inner Goat. This time Goat's brought his T30 along and they've ended up on Westfield against an enemy team that has a pair of T95s in platoon. Now, I mean, completely apart from the two T95s not really knowing which button to click or which game they're playing, uh, they also have a T28 on their team as well, and really having that many slow, immobile, easy targets on one team, even if they do have big scary guns, I think is really crippling. Um, I don't like people bleeding. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. Don't like people bringing pairs of T95s onto a team I'm on uh, because more often than not, what happens is the T95s might survive most of the game, but everything else will be killed out from under them and then they will be lost. And suddenly, they've got more tanks coming out than they can handle, which is the textbook method for handling T95s or JPEs or any other big tough to not or tough to crack nut of a tank destroyer you come up against deal with everything else first, kill it last. Even the IS-4, anything that's got heavy armor and is a real pain to deal with, you attack it last after you've killed all its support. In this case, Bros is playing pretty much as I would at this stage. He's heading up into the town. Now, I did previously try and record this, but it was stuttering so badly it was like watching a PowerPoint presentation. Um, it appears that that's an issue with this replay and not just my attempt to record at that particular point in time, so I'm sorry we're gonna have to suffer through it. Just like I am. Bros did take a shot there at the wall to try and get out, uh, outline on those guys, but couldn't. But he certainly could get a nice blind snapshot into that 12T. With that done, he begins heading up towards the northern end of town, looking for shots on these heavies who are too occupied fighting against all the other shit up in the hills to be paying attention to Brosif. Now this is a good setup, normally you have something pushing on what would be Brosif's right side. Uh, quite often I get dunked by other mediums or heavy tanks pushing into the town, but in this situation the enemy team are betting everything on the hill basically, which is not going to work out for them. As we can he see here, Broster has the back of this E75. He's actually uh, turned shooting up to the northwest towards Goat, giving Broster easy shots. With the immediate threat in the north of town dealt with, and the team breathing a little easier up there in the north, Broster then shifts his attention down south to these mediums. Centurion and T71 are in a spot of bother, so Broster goes for the highest hit points tank first. The 2801 ineffectively lobs HE, the Pershing. Brosif bullies it all the way down the hill. Stock turret Pershing with the historical 90mm gun. Finishes the super Pershing, which takes its gun out of the battle and gives the ascent a little more breathing space. Finishes the normal Pershing. And now it's just the Indian Panzer that's a threat to the Centurion, and that will be easy enough to deal with, considering the number of guns now pointed at it. Borisov only just gets relit. Uh, obviously, he cloaked up because of the bushes in front of him after killing the Persian. With the southeast now clear, Borisov and the rest of his team are clear to push through there. Uh, the pubs can get onto the enemy cap if they want to, but I know what Boris is going to do, and it's not cap. With five kills already, he's going to look for more kills. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it needs to be done because if those guys jump on the cap, you need somebody to stop the enemy team from simply just driving down to the hillside, hanging over the edge and shooting down into it. I've lost many a game to that, including a very important Clan Wars match where we kind of didn't think things through as much as we should have. And so if you can, you always need a at least something to run interference up here and stop the enemy from turning around and coming back to their cap. Bros is able to surprise the AC-48, but it spots him just in time. Just begin turning, it gets one shot off before it goes down. Bros now has the two T-95s up here to deal with, and they are basically on top of each other. They're turning back to engage him, and it looks like the Tiger 2, T-34 and T-28 are covering them. So they're free to engage Brosif and his 
friends over here while Inner Goat and the friendly 228 Proto and the SU 101 deal with all the shit behind them. Thankfully, they are fairly hemmed in there by the shape of the terrain. T28 goes down easily. The T95s have a lot of shit really stopping them from effectively engaging. Um, they're slow for one, they can't really get into a good position. Brosif is in a little bowl here. The T95s have that hill to worry about. It's a hopeless situation for them, and that's something you will have to get used to if you play the T95, as I'm sure Inner Goat will be able to say. You get stuck in that kind of position a lot where there's just nothing you can do. Meanwhile, Brosif loads HE to go for the Waffenträger off Panzer Fear. Rolls up behind it, and boom, there it goes. Oddly enough, it looks like the VK-2801 may have loaded AP to try and kill that thing after he was shooting HE for the rest of the match, because I saw one shot he put, out, uh, put into it that I swear didn't do any damage. Maybe it was just because things were moving so fast, but it would not surprise me one bit. Brosif's now up to 9. It looks like he can get his 10, but no. Sadly not, the T28 Proto takes it. And Brosif is left with 9 kills and 4,500 damage. Pretty good solid game. Very nice uh, action there in the town, just the, the sort of choosing which side to deal with first. I think my problem a lot of the time when I push into that town is I try and take on everything. Um, whereas Brosif clearly prioritized the heavy tanks up north, which were the bigger threat, took out the E-75, and, you know, the E-75 was unquestionably the biggest threat on the enemy team in terms of just the tank, as for the player, perhaps not. Um, and then he was able to deal with the mediums basically at leisure and keep the scent alive, which was a bonus, and the T-71 at least for a little while. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I always do enjoy watching Brosif play because he's just that much better at the game than me and has, you know, he, he seems to be more in tune with things. Brosif reacts to situations well. I'm a bit slower. Um, it takes me a while to notice when things have gone south or, you know, to get shots off at stuff. Um, so, as somebody who likes watching fast, fluid gameplay, um, I always enjoy watching other goons who are, you know, a, a cut or th probably a cut or five above me. Um, because they're just so decisive, and I think that's something I need to work on a bit. And then again, it's something I think that most people that play this game really need to work on. Um, but you have to be able to make the right decisions first, which is where most puppies hit a stumbling block. Thank you for watching. Uh, I've got one more 9.4 replay to upload, which is a 113 replay. So I'll do that one next, and I know it's a 113 replay. So I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you again. I'm very sorry I did that. Um, so we'll be able to see how the 113, the T10 Chinese heavy, stacks up, since it's not a very popular tank, um, doesn't get a lot of love. In any case, I'll see you then.